All right, so now we've got our triads spelling down. So now we're gonna put these triads into the context of a key. So last week we talked about scale degree function. And I told you that the functional names that we were studying um, were applied to scale degrees, but also they equally apply to um, chords. So anytime you build a chord on top of that scale degree, it adopts the same functional name. So scale degree five is called the dominant. If you build a triad on scale degree five, it's called a dominant triad. Um, you build a triad on scale degree one, it's called a tonic triad. Okay, so you've already kind of got these down, so you're going to get to practice them again. So it's exactly the same thing. So if you've got your scale degrees down, then you've kind of got your Roman numerals down. Um, we also say, you might also hear someone say a four chord or a three chord in the same way that we say scale, the chord that's built on scale degree four, scale degree three. Okay, so the different thing here that's a little bit new um, is you see the Roman numerals underneath of the chord. So one, two, three, four, five chord, but written as Roman numerals. Um, what you might also notice is that they're different qualities, right? Sometimes they're an upper and sometimes they're a lower case. And this actually designates the quality of the chord. So if you break down each of these chords, you'll see this is a major chord. So it's an uppercase Roman numeral. Anywhere place we have a, a lowercase Roman numeral, these are all minor chords. Um, and then there's also one diminished chord at the end. And again, we, we, we mark this with a little circle that always designates diminished and we use a lowercase Roman numeral. So in the major key, um, the one, four, and five, these are major triads. The rest are minor, except the leading chord, which is diminished. Um, what's kind of special about the minor key um, is that you also notice there's this accidental that's here and here. So for right now, as far as our world is concerned for quite some time, the five chord and the seven chord the dominant and leading tone chord in minor, you are always going to raise scale degree seven. So in this case, we're in the key of C minor. So the seventh scale degree is B. So instead of B flat and the key signature, it becomes B natural. In the five and the seven chord, we will for right now, always raise scale degree seven. And we'll talk about why that's the case when we get onto the harmony. But for right now, just know that that is the case. So in the minor key, your dominant chord is major because of that, because of that alteration. Your leading tone chord is diminished because of that. Now, sometimes you also see the chord that's built on the flat seven, and we'll kind of talk about that. I think in your musician, it's gonna come up though. Um, so if you did build this on flat seven instead on the B flat, this would be a major chord. So you might just wanna put that away in your head in case that pops up when you're doing your homework. That would end up being a major chord. Um, and we call it the sub, tonic chord, right, for flat seven. Okay, so these are the different functional names. So what I want you to do um, before you do, before you dive into your musician, I know this is on your handout, so you've got it right in front of you, but you will get nothing out of your homework if you just go in and you put this in front of you and get the chord quality names. But you're gonna go into your homework and it's gonna ask you what is the quality of the four chord, what's the quality of the three chord, and so forth. So take a minute and see if you can just memorize this. So group it up. So in the major key, the one, the major chords are one, four, and five. The minor chords are everything else except seven, which is diminished. Seven's always diminished. Okay, and then group them up in the in the other one below. And once you think you've got it, once you've got it memorized, then head over to musician and you're going to try that next bit real quick and see if you can remember them. See how well you do. Um, so you're looking for the um, the Roman numeral section in musician. Okay, and then swing back here and we'll do the next section. All right, so in the next section, you're gonna be asked to identify these Roman numerals um, in what's called root position, where the root is the lowest sounding chord, and when they're in inversion, when the root is not the lowest sounding note in the chord. Okay, so let's start with, with the root position chords first. So I've got a, just sort of exactly what you're gonna see. Basically, this is kind of like scale degree ID. So if your notes are stacked up in close position like this, then really, um, you're just looking to see what the scale degree of the bottom note is. So in the key of D-sharp minor, what chord is this? Okay, so in D-sharp minor, a chord that's built on B is what? Well, so B would be scale degree six, right? So that means that this is gonna be a six chord and so forth. So we can try maybe try one more here. Okay, so we're gonna spell a chord in this case. So enter a four chord in the key of F major. So the key signature is already there. So you're not gonna be doing any accidentals in this section unless 
Remember, if you're in the minor key and you have a five or a leading tone chord, right? So otherwise, don't don't add any accidentals. Don't let this uh, you know fool you. Just find scale degree four, stack your notes on top of it. So in the key of F major, scale degree four would be a B flat, and so we're just gonna stack our notes up above, and that's it. Does that make sense? So think of this really sort of as like scale degree ID, but then sca stack your triads right above it. Okay, so the next section. The next section after that is inversions. Okay, so let's take a look at that. All right, so if anything other than the root of the chord is the lowest sounding note, then we say that the chord has been inverted. Um, so just to, if I stack everything up nice and close, you can see what it looks like. Um, when everything's stacked up neatly, we write the Roman numeral exactly like this. But if I stack this and the lowest sounding note in the chord is the third of the chord, then I say that instead this is what's called a, a six chord. So in this case, a one six chord, or if it's a five chord, it'd be a five six or a two six. Um, the reason is, is because when you write it this way, as tight as you can, you end up with a sixth above the bass. This is where the name comes from. You end up with a sixth and a third, but this is where the name comes from. So it's this, we say it's a six chord. Um, and then if I take the same chord, but I stack it so that the fifth of the chord now is in the bass like this, and again, I scrunch it up as tiny as I can with the fifth in the bass, then I get what's called a six, four chord or a second inversion chord. And the reason is because I have a sixth and a fourth above the bass. So that's where the name comes from. So that's what these mean. So if you see six, that means that the third of the chord is in the bass. You see six, four, that means the fifth of the chord is in the bass. Okay, so it doesn't have to, of course the music doesn't have to be stacked like this. Sometimes we see it, I mean most often I should say, we see it in open position, something like this. Now what occurs above the bass, we don't care. It doesn't matter. So if I have a, a C6 chord, a C chord with the third in the bass, all I care is that when I stack it up, I've got C, E, and G in that chord. E's in the bass. Now, how you stack these doesn't matter. What the spacing is, none of it matters. I can put the C way up here, the G way up here, the E down here, it doesn't matter. So again, what we care about is what is specifically in the bass. That's where the name is coming from. Okay, so let's try a couple of examples together before you hit musician. All right, so when you get to musician, this is sort of what it's gonna be like. So you're gonna be, you're gonna be asked, you're gonna be given a chord um, in a key, with a key signature and asked to identify what the Roman numeral is with the correct inversion, or you'll be giving the key with the Roman numeral inversion and be asked to spell the chord. So let's just try a couple of these. So in the first case, <clears throat> we have the chord, we're in the key of G sharp minor, and we've got this chord and we have to identify what it is. Before I can do anything, I have to sort of, I have to go through the same procedure I did before with the open spacing, where I had to figure out what the major, whether the chord was major or minor, what the quality was. I had to stack it up in thirds neatly. I have to do exactly the same thing here. And again, what I suggest is grab some staff paper and just work this out by hand. So I have to first start by stacking this chord up in thirds so I can figure out well, what, what chord is this? What's the Roman numeral? Um, so I start with the bottom note, same as before, stack everything above it, G. Now that C needs to go in a line, right? It can't go in a space if it's gonna all be together. So this is what my chord actually is. So it's a C, it's a C triad in the key of G sharp minor. So if I'm in the key of, I'm sorry, C sharp triad in the key of G sharp minor. So what is scale degree, what scale degree is C sharp in the key of G sharp minor? Well, it's four, right? Scale degree four, okay. And then this is where my, my quality, knowing the qualities really comes in handy, right? So if I have to type in what the quality of this chord is, well, I have to know that it's minor right? Otherwise my Roman numeral is going to be off. Okay, so it's a minor chord. Now the next thing is that, well, I need to know, well, what's the, what's the inversion of the chord? So when I stack it like this, I can see that C is the root of the chord. And then if I go back here, I see, oh, well, that E was the lowest sounding note in the chord. So if the third is the lowest sounding note in the chord, then that means that this is a four, six, right? If it was the fifth, the G is the lowest sounding note, it would be a six, four. Third makes it a six. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, so in this case, now I'm in the key of, of A flat major, and here's my chord. 
So first thing again that I'm going to do is I'm going to start by stacking this cord up all in thirds so I can see what I'm working with. So it doesn't matter where you stack it, anywhere you want. So I'll just start with that F on the bottom. And now everything has to be on lines, right? So the next note in the chord is a B flat. So that has to go in a line. The next note in the chord is a D flat. That has to go in a line, right? So that means that this is going to have to go. Wait a minute. Oh, B flat is here. I'm tired. OK. <laughs> B flat is here. So there is my F, my B flat, D flat. Everything's stacked up. OK, so now, I, now that I get it stacked up, I can see what I'm working with. I'm working with a B flat chord in the key of A flat major. So in the key of A flat major, B is what scale degree? Scale degree two, right? So that means I've got a two chord. Okay, so to type my Roman numeral, again, I gotta know quality. It's the first thing I, I gotta know before I can type anything down. So what's the quality of a two chord in a major key? It is minor. Okay, so now, what's the inversion? So when you look at this chord, B is the root of the chord, right? But I have F as the lowest sounding note. F is the fifth of the chord. So what is the inversion? What's the figured bass symbol when the fifth of the chord is in the bass? It is six, four, right? It's not gonna look very neat here, the way I write it. You're gonna write it nicer. <laughs> six, and then put the four right underneath of it when you write it out by hand. Um, the next set that you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be given a Roman numeral and you're gonna to have to spell it out. So we're just sort of gonna do the same thing but in reverse. So start first, forget about the inversion symbol. Forget about it. Just think about building a five chord first in the key of A. So what is scale degree five in the key of A? Well, scale degree five is E. So build an E triad. And so remember, you're not adding any accidentals unless you're in the minor key and you're building a five or a seven, right? Otherwise, no accidentals, leave it alone. They're in the key center, you're good. Okay, so that right now, what I have is a five chord in the key of A. Now to make this a five six, what member of that chord needs to be in the bass or what has to be the lowest sounding note? It's gotta be the third, right? Okay, so that means the G needs to be the lowest sounding note. So to put this in first inversion, then I gotta scoot that E up so that the G is the lowest note in the bass and there it is, we got it. And you could have put it in any register. You could have put it up or down. It wouldn't matter. Okay, one more. So, all right, same thing. Forget about the inversion symbol. Start just by um, by writing a two chord in the key of B flat. So again, we're asking ourselves, what is scale degree two in the key of B flat? Scale degree two would be C, and then build your triad right on top of it. Okay, so there is my two chord in the key of B flat. Now to make this a 6-4 chord, 6-4 means which member of that chord is in the bass? It would be the fifth, right? So the fifth of my chord is the G. So that means that that needs to be the lowest sounding note. So that means these two notes need to come up above it somewhere, right? So I'll see the E, I'll scoot the E up. The C, I'll scoot the C up. And there it is. Two, six, four. All right. Go give it a shot. Good luck.